Krishna hai Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadhari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Jaya Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Shodanandana Rajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Rajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana
Shishi Radha Madhava ki. Gantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaura Premanandi. Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4, Chapter 24 Text 44, and it's from the verse, the, sorry, the chapter, Chanting the Song Sung by Lord Shiva. Oh, we don't have it written up, no? Yeah? Okay, everyone's a phony. <laughs> um, so it's Canto 4, chapter 24, text 44. Um, darshinam no didrikshunam dehi bhagavat architam rupam priyatmanam priyat priyatma priyatamam 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 Swanam Swanam Sarvendriya Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Gunanjanam Darsham no didrikshunam no, Sorry Darshan Darshanam no didrikshunam Darshanam no didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Rupam Priyatamam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Darshanam no didrikshunam Darshanam no didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Darshanam no didrikshunam Darshanam no didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Darshanam no Didrikshunam Darshanam no Didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Nanjanam Darshanam no Didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Darshanam no Didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Ladies Darshanam All together now Darshanam no Didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Anyone else? Yeah? Darshanam no Didrikshunam Dehi Bhagavat Architam Rupam Priyatamam Swanam Sarvendriya Gunanjanam Darshanam Vision Na Power 
didrikshunam desirous to see dehi kindly exhibit bhagavata of the devotees architam as worshipped by them rupam form priyatamam dear most svanam of your devotees sarva indriya all the senses guna qualities agyanam very much pleasing translation of purport by Srila Prabhupada my dear Lord I wish to see you exactly in the form that your very dear devotees worship you have many other forms but I wish to see your form that is especially liked by the devotees please be merciful upon me and show me that form for only that form worship by the devotees can perfectly satisfy all the demands of the senses purport in the Shruti or Veda Mantra, it is said that this, the Supreme Absolute Truth is Sarva Kama, Sarva Ganda, Sarva Rasa, or in other words, he is known as Raso Vaisa, this, this source of all relishable relationships, Rasas. We have various senses, the powers of seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, etc., and all the propensities of our senses can be satisfied when the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord. Hrishikena, Hrishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti, Ruchate. Bhakti means engaging all the senses in the service of the master of the senses, Hrishikesh, from the Narada Pancharatra. These material senses, however, cannot be engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, one has to become free from all, in, all designations. Sarvopadi vinirmuktam tatparadvena nirmalam. One has to become free from all designations of false egoism and thus become purified. When we engage our senses in the service of the Lord, the desires or the inclinations of the senses can be perfectly fulfilled. Lord Shiva therefore wants to see the Lord in a form that is inconceivable to the Bodha philosophers or the Buddhists. The impersonalists and the voidists also have to see the form of the Absolute. In Buddhist temples, there are forms of Lord Buddha in meditation, but they are not worshiped like the forms of the Lord in Vaishnav temples, forms like Radha Krishna, Sita Ram, and Lakshmi Narayan. Amongst the different sampradayas, Vaishnav sects, either Radha Krishna or Lakshmi Narayan is worshipped. Lord Shiva wants to see that form perfectly, just as the devotees want to see it. The words Rupam, Priyatam, Swanam are specifically mentioned here, indicating that Lord Shiva wants to see that form which is very dear to the, to the devotees. The word swanam is especially significant because only devotees are very, very dear. The devotees are very, very dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The jnanis, yogis, and karmis are not particularly dear, for the karmis simply want to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead as their order supplier. The jnanis want to see, want him, want to, see him to become one with him. And the yogis want to see him particularly represented within their heart as Paramatma. But the bhaktas or the devotees want to see him in his complete perfection. As stated in Brahma Samhita, Venam kanvantam aravinda dayala taksham Parhavatam samasitam buddha sundarangam Kandarpa koti kamaniya vishesha shobham Govindam adipursham tamaham bhajami I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, who is adept at playing on his flute, whose eyes are blooming like lotus petals, whose head is bedecked with peacock feathers, whose beauty is tinged with the hue of blue clouds, and whose unique loveliness charms millions of cupids. This, Lord, thus Lord Shiva's desire is to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead as he is described in this way. That is, he wants to see him as he appears to the Bhagavatas, the devotees. The conclusion is that Lord Shiva wants to see him in complete perfection and not in the impersonalist or voidist way. Although the Lord is one in his various forms, Advaita, Machuta, Manadim, still his form as the young enjoyer of the gopis and companion of the gopas, is it? Of the coward boys, yes, Kishora Murti, is the most perfect form. Thus, Vaishnavas accept the form of the Lord in his Vrindavan pastimes 
as the chief form. Krishna. Amagina Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yana Tasma Sri Gurve Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam. So a very carefully chosen text and purport. Um, wonderful. So Lord Shiva is uh, asking this question, and by asking this question, is instructing us. And devotees on the whole, we, we kind of have a strange relationship with Lord Shiva. We kind of tend not to talk about him, avoid him as much as possible. In the Haribhakti Vilas, one of the principal Vaishnava festivals, Gaudiya Vaishnava festivals, is the festival of Shivratri, which we don't celebrate at all. But it's right there in the Haribhakti Vilas is one of our principal festivals because Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnav, Vaishnavana Mita Shambhu. Shambhu is the greatest Vaishnav. And we just, we ignore him as some peripheral character, some, someone that people worship and it's got nothing to do with us. It's like a deviation of some kind. But um, in Vrindavan, he's Gopeshwar Mahadev. He's Gopeshwar, he's, he's, he's a gopi. And, and his job is to uh, give uh, Vrindaranya Rati Pradam. That comes, Vrindaranya, the taste for Vrindavan, comes from Lord Shiva. And that's the benediction that Krishna gave him because he couldn't, he tried to be a gopi, and Tulsi Devi kind of let him in, dressed him up and everything. And he was dancing, and Krishna was dancing and saying, hey, hang on a minute here, I get the smell of an inter interloper. Who is it? And then he, he identified Shiva immediately. He said, it's you, isn't it? You're Lord Shiva, what are you doing? <laughs> and he said, I just wanted to come. And he said, well, okay, so, but you can stay, but, but because you're so special, then you're the person who will give the taste for Vrindavan. So when Prabhupada says you can't buy a ticket to Vrindavan, well, you literally can buy a ticket to Vrindavan, but you can't get into Vrindavan, into the mood of Vrindavan. You can physically go there, but you can't feel it without the mercy of Lord Shiva. So when you're in Vrindavan going around and you go to Radhakund and there's, as you're walking towards Radhakund, there's a little, on the left-hand side, there's a little Shiva temple with the, the Shiva Lingam and you tend to ignore it. That's actually the place you have to go first. <laughs> That's where you get the blessing so that you can understand where you are. Um, so the fact that Lord Shiva is saying this and his, his desire is the desire of every devotee. So he's being very humble here and he wants to see the form that the very dear devotees worship. So he's not including himself among these very dear devotees, but he was in Vrindavan, he is in Vrindavan. So he is one of these, of course, he's one of these Bhagavats. And Vaishnavana Gita Sabhu, he's the greatest devotee. So we have to, we have to take this very seriously. So his desire to see this form, and Prabhupada in the purport, he, he points out, so the, those of us who are involved in karma yoga, you know, not even karma yoga, but just, just we want stuff, and we'll, we'll go anywhere to get that stuff, and someone said, well, if you go to God, God gives stuff, and we go to God and give stuff. Hello, Pirikshit. <laughs> Do come in and take a seat like a good man. So when we, and then he talks about the jnanis who they want to worship, but they want to become the same as, peers to God. And the yogis who want to worship God in the heart. Prabhupada isn't actually knocking these people. And that's, that's clear from the last sentence. He says, although the Lord is one in his various forms, Still, his form as the young enjoyer of the gopis and companion of the cowherd boys is the most perfect. Thus, Vaishnavas accept the form of the Lord in his Vrindavan pastimes as the chief form. So what Prabhupada is saying that Krishna in Vrindavan is the Lord of our hearts. He's the, he's the uh, Chitta Hari. He's the one who steals our heart. So he's the one who steals our heart. But, but other forms are stealing other people's hearts. And we have to recognize that, and Prabhupada recognizes that. 
So Prabhupada is teaching didactically. He's teaching as a teacher, teaching students. So he's being very straightforward and straightforward. We're not karmis, we're not gyanis, but he's not saying there's not there's anything wrong with being a karmi. A I mean, if you're a karmi, you're a karmi. I'm a karmi. How many people want to go back to Godhead? That's being a karmi. <laughs> Not, we, we just we just recited the shikshastikam na danam na janam na sundarim kavitam vajikarishkam uh, janmani janmani janmanishvare so lifetime birth after birth let me come back birth after birth so I've given up the idea of going to heaven I don't care about going to heaven I'll come back again you've given that up you give up the idea of salvation moksha forget it going to heaven forget it that's what being a devotee means so Lord Chaitanya is showing us this is what devotional service is you're giving up all that but that's a choice you make. And if we're not there yet, we're not there yet. You know, if we, if we don't feel like that, if we don't get it, then we just don't get it. And then we're in that other camp. And then, and then how do you feel when you read this and you think, oh, I'm a nobody. The Prabhupada's not saying here, nobody. He's just saying, if you, want, if you want to understand the perfect form, it's Krishna in Vrindavan. And then a kama sarva kama va moksha kama udarati tevrena bhakti yogena yajetu purushamparam. So if you have a kama, you have no desire. You're not a karmi at all. You're desireless completely. Sarva kama, you're full of desire. Moksha kama, your desire is for liberation. You're kind of a decent skin and you're religious and all that kind of, whatever your position, just turn to Krishna and Krishna will accept your service. That's what Prabhupada is saying. So we're, we're all in one of these positions. We all want to be God. I mean, when I was three, I remember having a conversation with my father about, um, I forget what exactly it is that I wanted to do, but I wanted to do something. And uh, my father said, well, you can't do that. And I said, but I, I, want, I want that. And he said, no, you can't have that. I said, well, if I can't have it, I'll make it. Well, you, you can't make it. And I said, well, I, I can make it. You know, it's like a three-year-old, I can do anything. And, uh, and he said, no, only God can do that. And I was so annoyed. Mm -hmm. Who's God? It's like, who, who's the competition? <laughs> Immediately, I was in competition with God, you know. And I was so frustrated that I couldn't make stuff and produce metal and ores and timber, or whatever it is you have to do to get the thing that you wanted. I, I couldn't do it. And my father had logically gone through the fact that, you know, we don't have, we can't afford it. And Mr. Bridges in the shop, he doesn't have it and, and all that. And uh, so I couldn't get what I wanted. And then the only person who, who could arrange all that kind of stuff was God. And I was like, someone with more than me? Are you kidding or what? <laughs> you expect me to believe that? So it, we're all full of this stuff from birth. And it's from previous lives. We've been practicing this over and over and over again. And we have all our attachments and all our desires. And Prabhupada is saying that if you want to get over those desires, then the form, the person to approach is Krishna and Vrindavan. And he says particularly the young form, the young enjoyer of the gopis in Vrindavan, because Krishna is young in Vrindavan. He has these different ages, but he's always very young. So Madhava, Radha Madhava were uh, formed in Vrindavan. Normally devotees go to Jayapur, to the Murtiwalas, to get deities made. But in Ireland, just for some strange reason, the Irish are contrary, <laughs> rebellious. We went to Vrindavan, <laughs> because you can, you know. And uh, we ordered it from Pippin uh, Mukatwala, I think it was. And uh, he, he made he had the caste that um, they had just made, uh, and that's the caste that we made Radha Madhava in. Uh, so they come from Vrindavan, and they've always been in the Vrindavan mood. So you're particularly blessed in this temple, that your deities are not only in the mood of Vrindavan, they're actually physically made in Vrindavan, taken directly from Vrindavan to here. And they've always been worshipped in that mood. And people have always said that on the whole, deities are worshipped in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. And you, you see some deities in some temples, and their form is definitely Lakshmi Narayan. It's quite formal, the way they're presented. But Radha Madhava are, have you noticed the way 
Radharani has her hand up like this. Mm -hmm. So Lakshmi Narayan, the hand is like this. It's quite reserved. It's a blessing. This is giving blessing. But Radharani is up like this. Tamal Krishna Goswami, when he saw them for the first time, he said, oh, she's waving. <laughs> she's waving at the devotees. <laughs> it's kind of, it's friendly. She's so friendly. And Madhava is, is more than friendly. Like in Vrindavan, he's tricky. He's playful. He's very playful. And if you understand that, if you understand this passage, then you understand the mood of Radha Madhava. So Prabhupada is saying that this is the form that Lord Shiva is asking for. He's asking for this Vrindavan form. And that's where he went, of course, to become Gopeshwar. So he's asking, can, where, where is the form that the Bhagavats want? The, the, the real confidential devotees, the ones who are really interested and absorbed in you. I want to see that form. I want to be involved with that form. And you have it right here. Exactly what Lord Shiva is talking about. And it, it's, he's very special. Um, well, both of them, of course, are very special. They're, they are one in that sense. But they're both very special in the sense that they're giving us exactly what Lord Shiva is saying. What is the form that the Bhagavats want? And they want this form of Krishna that is um, full of love and full of play. And that's Radha Madhava. And as you worship them, as you come to them and give your worship and be open to them, open to them being themselves, because when we come and we, we worship Krishna, we demand a lot of Krishna. So if, if it's from the karmi part of us, and all of us have a bit of a karmi, a bit of a jnani, a bit of a yogi inside us, but from that karmi part of us, we, we want Krishna to be the one who gives us stuff. Now, I don't know your experience, but I, I, I don't go into a shop and say, can I have one of these, one of these, one of these? Yeah, thanks, that's okay. Yeah, no, I don't have to pay. I just thank you very much, bye. Just give me stuff. Yeah, we go in front of Krishna and we say, give us a BMW and exam results. <laughs> and there's no, there's, no, there's no idea of giving anything. It's just give us stuff, you know, for free. <laughs> it's like, and if that's how you approach Krishna, well, that's all you're looking for and that's all you're looking at. That's the Krishna you see. You're not seeing Krishna for who he is. We've put on green glasses, and all we see is the green. And if we go as a, as a jnani, and we're seeing, uh, I want to be one, that's, Krishna's a concept. He's not really a person, but he's a concept. And I want to be at one with that concept. I want to be one as part of the awareness, the consciousness, you know, and, and all the wonderful words we have that go with that. The enlightenment, I want to be part of the enlightenment. So they're kind of vague concepts in one sense. But if you want that, that's all you see. You don't see Radha Madhava, you just see symbolic representations of Brahman. But you don't see the people who are there. So Lord Shiva, that's what he wants to see. He wants to see Krishna as he is. And that's what Arjuna asked in the Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna showed him his, his universal form. And Arjuna was all excited about seeing his universal form. And then this form manifest in chapter 11. It's like, boom, when he saw past, present, and future at the same time. We can't compute that. That's just freaking me out. And Arjuna was looking at He was looking at the battle was already finished. And everyone was already rushing into his mouth and being killed. And he had millions of heads and arms and eyes. And oh, it's like, wow. Multimedia show, and it was just IMAX. Wow, <laughs> just freaked him out. He couldn't. He couldn't. His senses were completely overwhelmed. So he said, "No, no, no! Please show me your original form. Show me your original form." And he showed him his original form. And in that original form, in chapter twelve, which is only twenty verses, but chapter twelve is the turning point of the whole Gita. So you've gone from. You've gone the middle six chapters where Krishna talks about bhakti, and then all of a sudden, Krishna starts to end his shlokas with priyostime, priyostime, because you're dear to me, because of my affection for you. To speak to Arjuna in a completely different way. It's very personal. 
It's nothing to do with the material. It's nothing to do with karma yoga. He's explained that. Jnana yoga, he's explained that. Dhyana yoga, he's explained that. He's gone through all that. That's not the issue here at all. The issue here is you and me. So now you've asked to see me as I am, uh, apart from all this sea of stuff. But this is who I am. Do you want a relationship with me? Because I love you. I, you're dear to me. And that's the relationship that Arjuna wanted. And that's why he fought in the battle. Because of his love for Krishna. Not because of religion or philosophy or this yoga or that yoga. Because he loved Krishna. That's why he made his decision. Because Krishna said to him, I love you. And all of a sudden it was open to him to love. It, Krishna made it possible for him to love. And that's what having the deity form is about. It's access. It's darshan. So we have the darshan. We can see Krishna. Otherwise we can't see Krishna. It's, it, he's, he's an idea. He's, he's mythology. It's a story. Very interesting story. Myth means story. But it, it's, it's a fairy story. It's like Santa Claus. So we have to see him. There has to be some way that we can offer our worship, our prayer, our heart. There has to be some physical manifestation. So Krishna manifests for us, and he's manifest here in this wonderful form that is the form. <laughs> it's the one. Because it's all about love. Vrindavan is all about love. His relationship with the devotees is all about love. It's not about anything else. Everything else for Krishna is come see, come saw. But if, whether you're successful or not, he doesn't care. He still loves you. Whether the temple room is perfect or not, or your roof is leaking or fixed, eh, whatever, he's all right. As long as, as long as he has the ability to relate. And we do it through darshan. We see Krishna. And darshan also means that he sees us. And so when we come before him, we have to be prepared to be seen. We have to prepare ourselves to be seen by Krishna, because he sees everything. <laughs> We're exposing ourselves to this playful person, and he's going to play. And he's going to play with us, and he's going to play with our ego, because he doesn't take that seriously at all. He's a kid. Kids don't take people's ego seriously. <laughs> and you're exposing yourself, and you're saying, please, Lord, please help me become a devotee. And, oh yeah, he'll help you. <laughs> So be careful. <laughs> There's a reason why this is the form for the Bhagavats. It's not for everybody. Because no, everybody can't handle it. Like Arjuna couldn't handle the universal form. It's, it's not the form for everybody. This is the form for those whose hearts are pure. So if you want your heart to be pure, we know our hearts aren't pure. So Krishna is exposing himself to us. He's allowing darshan. But he's also seeing us. So we can see him. And we can see him in this form and pray to him and ask him, please let me see you more. Let me see who you really are. Pray like Lord Shiva has prayed. Pray like Arjuna has prayed. That the Bhagavats, how do they pray? They want to see Krishna for who he is. And he's, he's not about religion. This religion, that religion. He doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't care if you're Gaudiya Mat or Iskon, or Catholic or Protestant or Muslim. These are important things to us. These are big issues. I mean, if there's a Gaudiya Mat group down the street and they're chanting Hare Krishna and they're chanting Guru Puja and they're worshiping everyone that we worship, we still hate them. <laughs> we hate them more than the Christians. <laughs> Why should we hate anyone? Krishna is all about love. He loves everyone. And that's Radha Madhava's mood. They want everyone to come and have darshan. He wants to see everyone. Because what he is seeing is his servants, his devotees. He's seeing the, the Prabhupada says, his young form, the enjoyer of the gopis and the companion of the cowherd boys. So he wants to see these people. These are his people. Who's that? That's everyone. So anyone can come to the temple. Anyone can come in front of Radha Madhava. 
because that's what he wants. And Radharani wants to engage them in his service, in the Vrindavan mood. So we have to be in the Vrindavan mood. And in the Vrindavan mood, the gopis, they worship Katyayani so that they could get a husband. And others worship Shiva. And there was all kinds of religion going on in Vrindavan. And so there's all kinds of religion going on in society. Fine. But Krishna is our focus. He's the Lord of our heart. Because we choose that. And if someone else hasn't chosen that, that's fine. We can, we can give them the choice. They still have to choose themselves. Because otherwise it's not love. It has to be freely given. How can we help people freely choose Krishna? That's our challenge. That's our challenge as servants of Radha Madhava. How can we help people come before Radha Madhava and have their own experience, whatever that may be? There's one Protestant lady in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, the, some of the Protestant communities are very strong in their religion. Their religion is very strong, no surrender. Every other religion is wrong. Even the other Protestants in the other church is wrong. <laughs> this is quite sectarian. And uh, the temple, the, the uh, curtains opened, and she went, Wah! and she ran out of the temple. <laughs> she was totally freaked out. The whole idea of deities completely freaked her out. So for some people, they, they can't handle deities. If you're a uh, a Jew, a Muslim, or a Christian, the idea of, of the worship of deities is completely off the cards. They can't handle that at all. And theologically, in their tradition. And because of that, they have a prejudice. So they, they can't even start to understand what deity worship is. And if I go around the temples in Leicester, and I've been around to all the temples in Leicester at some stage or other, then most of the priests will say, Let, uh, come and see the idols. The, the word idol is a very pejorative term. It's a very nasty term. You should never use that term. You're, you're saying, in effect, you're saying, come and let me show this really stupid thing. That's what you're actually saying. Uh, idol worship is really not acceptable socially. Uh, to the extent that when the Enlightenment happened, so this was the separation of religion and politics and the state and, and uh, intellectual life, that they, they separated this intellectually with the philosophers like Hume and these kind of people, but the basis of their separation was also against the same thing. They didn't, they didn't intellectually uh, critically analyze their Judaic background. So they took Judaic uh, Abrahamic pre prejudice with them about the worship of the deity. So right up until the 19th century, the whole field of, of uh, ethnography, sociology that, we, that, that has developed in the Western world um, uh, has developed on the basis that idol worship is a really stupid thing. And these are idols. And that's, that's the general zeitgeist, that's, the, that's how the West thinks. And that's, what, and that's why Indians feel so embarrassed trying to explain these things, because they're up against a tremendous prejudice. And it's not only religious, it's also intellectual. It's in, it's in schools, it's in colleges, it's taught like that. So the basis of, of the intellectual understanding of religion is that religion, like everything else, is a form of evolution. And the beginning of religion is you worship stones and trees and things like that. And then you graduate and you worship, you worship a murti, but you worship it symbolically. It's not God, obviously not God, because material and spiritual things are different. And we're, we're now looking at material things and understanding material things, and we're, we're getting on top of it. We're getting real knowledge. Real knowledge is about things you can see. So there's a separation between spiritual and material. But this is a, an Abrahamic concept that the Enlightenment took on without critically analyzing it. But that's not the Indian concept. It's not even the Eastern concept, even in Taoism. In, in the Indian concept, the material and spiritual are one. Krishna is actually everywhere. God is everywhere. 
So God can manifest in stone. So, so animism, this idea of worshiping inanimate objects, which is the lowest form of religion, is like, you know, if you're really stupid, you do that. But when you advance a bit in consciousness, then you start doing other things. And eventually you go beyond deities and all that kind of stuff. So we hear that in the words of Vivekananda and Dayananda Saraswati and these people from the 19th century in India. But they're responding to Christianity and the Enlightenment. And they're trying to make Hinduism sound acceptable to these communities. So they funnel Hinduism into a very small space and they leave out deity worship and all the, all the stuff that's incomprehensible to the West and they feed the West what the West can understand. But it has become now Hinduism. Most Hindus begin to think like that. But the fact is that Hinduism thinks differently. So this morning I got out my Giriraj and worshipped him. This is the lowest form of religion. It's for the people who have no thought processes, no intellectual processes. Gopinath Acharya this morning in Oxford, an Oxford don. He's a, a member of the theology faculty at Oxford University. He got out his Giri Raj and worshipped him. So what's going on there? <laughs> These are not, this isn't backward. So, you know, because Giri Raj, he's my rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so God, God does manifest in any form God can manifest anywhere why? because God is unlimited we can't limit God this, this is the simple approach but it's, it's there's no basis for the understanding of that in the West we have, to, we have to understand that when we bring people to the temple they've got so much going on in their head we have no idea to the, the extent of it and it's going to be very difficult to get through it. So what's going to make the difference? That they have a lovely experience. That's what makes the difference. That they meet a sadhu. Now you may say that you're not a sadhu, but the qualities of a sadhu are suridam sarvabhutanam to be friendly to, towards all living beings Tatikshiva Karunaka. To be tolerant and compassionate. To, to be tolerant, compassionate, and friendly towards all living beings. Vinitam Sadhabhushanam. These are the qualities of the Sadhu. We, we, anyone can be compassionate. Anyone can be tolerant. We just have to learn it. We bring someone in and they say, I'm an atheist, I don't care about God. And I say, oh, that's okay, just come in and see the deity and get some prasad and chant Hare Krishna with us. And just ignore it. Just be friendly, just be kind. Just be nice, just be compassionate, be tolerant. There's no thing in our head that we have to smash their philosophy, smash the demon in them and all that kind of stuff. Let, let that to Lord Nishingadev. He'll take care of all that. But just to bring them and to have darshan of Krishna and Krishna does the rest. Madhava will do everything. So Krishna will influence their heart. And it may take three lifetimes, it may take four lifetimes before they really get going. Whatever it takes, it doesn't matter. It's not the point. The point is that we give them the opportunity, which means we're giving them the choice. We're putting them in front of Krishna. They don't have to choose now. They don't have to get it now. It'll, it's a slow burn. Little drops of water wear away the stone, Prabhupada says. And we have to understand that. Just turn on the tap. And slowly, 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 people will change. And that's exactly what's happening to us. We're, we're only giving people what's happening to us. That's where the compassion comes in. So Jayadev, he travels all around the country. And he doesn't ask anyone for uh, payment. And he just appears on your doorstep and ch starts chanting Hare Krishna all over you. And it's just a wonderful service, just bringing Krishna, 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 Krishna. And everyone just gets fired up because you can't not, because of his spirit. And he's got, he's got a wonderful technique and a charm and a charisma, all gifts from Krishna that he uses wonderfully in his service. When you see a devotee like that, you see there's, there's a, a little spark of Krishna. 
And the fact that he goes anywhere and everywhere, tolerance and compassion, that's what drives us. And friendly to everyone. You see, a sadhu. That's what a sadhu is. It's, it's a simple thing. It's not, it's not a, we think it's like it's way up in the, in the clouds and it's something that will happen to us next lifetime or something like that. No. We're here now. Now is the time to be a little compassionate, a little tolerant of our God brothers and God sisters, a little kind. That's all compassion means. We can all do that. And that's the Vrindavan mood. It's the mood of love. How do we develop love in our hearts? How do we develop love in our community? But the only thing we can do is be loving. That's our contribution, each and every one of us individually. When we see someone in difficulty, be loving. How do we know if someone's in difficulty? When they're angry, when they're upset, when they're bitter, when things start getting political, and they start, they start shouting back and getting awkward, that's when you know someone's suffering. Um, Anuradha, I don't know, some of you know Anuradha in Oxford. She was on book distribution for many years in London. And uh, she was in Queensbury one time and she was, she had a little spot and it was beside a, a flower stall. And uh, she would come and distribute her books. So one day she came and distributed her books and the guy in the flower stall came out and he, he, uh, he started laying into her. He says, what are you doing standing here? You're just, you're just, you're in front of all my customers. This is, a, you know, go out and get a job. Why don't you just do something productive with your life? And he's just, a, just making a whole scene. And she'd been there for ages. She'd come there for, you know, time after time. And he'd been on his flower stall and there was no issue. She couldn't figure out. So he was going on. And he was getting aggressive. So he, he just, she turned around to him. She said, what happened? No, normally you'd put your fists up or you'd, you know, invoke Lord Nisringadev or something. But she just asked him, what happened? And he stopped. And he said, his son committed suicide. <laughs> that, that's what happened. And then he broke down crying. Because she was tolerant. She didn't kind of say, I'm getting the police. Or, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, forget you, you, you waste of space. I'm going, oh, I'll go and stand somewhere else. I don't need people like you in my life or, or whatever. She just understood that what, what changed this person? Why does someone go off on one like that? Something must have happened. It's suffering. <coughs> if we understand that, it's much easier to be compassionate and tolerant. We have to understand that in our community, we're all suffering on a daily basis. And we're all enjoying on a daily basis. But the suffering can, can get pretty grim sometimes. And we have, to be able, we have to be there for people so that they can be there for Krishna. And that's, that's, our, that's our job. And that's, that's what we can do. So I'm just looking at the time. I think there are some thoughts on this text and some thoughts on Radha Madhava and their significance. I'm just so happy for you that you have Radha Madhava to worship here because According to Lord Shiva and Arjuna, this is the person who the Bhagavats are looking to. So you're, you're, the whole mood of this temple should be the Vrindavan mood. That's, that's how to worship Radha Madhava. And different devotees will come and from their perspective, it's Lakshmi Narayan and it's all that kind of stuff and just go, yes, 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 Hare Krishna. And then continue on in the Vrindavan mood. I'm just telling you that is the, this is the Vrindavan mood. This, that's for these deities. And that's how they were always... When we started, we worshipped them in the Lakshmi Narayan mood because that's what we were told. But it became obvious after about a year that they were in the Vrindavan mood. And everyone just got into that mood. Um, <laughs> it was what <laughs> We used to talk about the bower, the, the, the bowers of Vrindavan, the little kind of clumps of foliage and everything and Radha Krishna would go into their little bower and enjoy. And we were joking one time in the Belfast temple about the bowers of Vrindavan. It was the thing that we used to say, the bowers of Vrindavan, because we had these lovely gardens with big rhododendrons. The rhododendrons were really high, like 35 feet high, huge, you know, and beautiful, uh, green and the flowers were beautiful. And then um, 
one day a devotee uh, started running around the temple saying, gas, gas, gas leak, there was a gas leak in the temple. It was like, oh, total panic. Everyone ran in all directions. But Nittai Satchinanda, Radhamadava's most faithful servant, he ran and he grabbed the deities. He grabbed Radhamadava and he grabbed another devotee and they took the deities into these bushes to protect them. Because there was a little drizzle, you know, Ireland. And uh, they brought them in underneath the bushes and they put, put cloth on them and they were sitting in the bushes in the bower. And there was no gas leak. There was, no, there was nothing wrong at all. <laughs> and we were all just wondering, what, what had they done? And they just wanted to go and enjoy in the bower in the bower of Vrindavan. <laughs> and became, all these strange things happened that were just so playful. And, and so wonderful. And they really endear Radha Madhava to our hearts. We'll hear more about it tomorrow. Some of the devotees will be telling their stories. So there are some thoughts. So thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Radha Madhava ki. Jai. If anyone has any questions or comments or answers. I just wanted to pick up on probably one of the last points you made, that <coughs> for about a year you worshipped them as in, in the awe and reverence mood, and it became more apparent after a year or so. Um, I was just curious as to what, how did that progress? How did that, how did the mood change for you as a community? The well, it took some years before the Vrindavan mood really came out, and that's when they ended up in Belfast. So it, it wasn't as apparent when they were in Dublin. It was a bigger temple, there was lots of Bujaris. When they got to Belfast, everything was slimmed down, and it just became more needs must a little bit. So everyone just, everyone just came closer to them. We just became totally dependent on them. We had nowhere else to go. You know, they were, the one, they were the only ones who could help us. So, and as everyone got closer to them, they manifest more. It, it's like just in reading the Gita, Arjuna gets closer to Krishna. That's why the relationship clicks. So, at the beginning of the relationship, Arjuna starts saying, oh, I can't fight, I can't do this fight. Oh, look at it. And Krishna says, Hang on, you're beginning to sound like a eunuch, you know. You know, it's just beginning to sound a bit weird. I mean, are you a Narayan or what? You know. So he was chiding him. He was like, it was just two two guys having a chat. So when one man generally expresses a weakness to another man, the other man makes fun of him. That's how men <laughs> do it. And uh, you know, you can see people in the pub going, "Oh, I fell down the stairs." You know, you know, I fell down the stairs. You know, and was, and all that. So and so Krishna was just back and forth with them like that. But then when Arjuna said, I'm a soul surrendered unto you, I don't know what to do, please help me. The whole Krishna's tone changed completely. And the whole conversation becomes, so Krishna takes him very seriously. He starts to deal with him in a, in a completely different way. And gradually, and, and all through the relationship, Arjuna's asking questions. He's engaging. They're, they're good questions, intelligent questions, and he's understanding and, and he gets it. And, and Krishna gets deeper and deeper. This is confidential. This is more confidential knowledge. This is the most confidential knowledge. It's going deeper and deeper. So, and it's, it's like that with us. It's, it's a relationship. Krishna's going to, if we want it, he's going to get deeper and deeper. And it, it'll just become obvious. And it'll only become obvious to the people to whom, who are looking for the relationship. It won't become obvious to everyone because it's personal. So, Everyone standing in front of Radha Madhava, every single individual has their own relationship. There are as many religions in the room as there are devotees. It's not, it's not one thing. Because everyone has their individual relationship with Krishna. It's personal. Personalism. That's us. So we understand that every single person in the room has their own individual relationship with Krishna. And, and we don't know what it is. So we're no judge of it. And some person who doesn't claim to be a Iskon devotee or something comes and stands in front of the deity and has an experience. That's a real experience. We have to validate that. And they may walk out not being a devotee, but we know they are deep inside their heart. 
And when it manifests, we don't know how it's going to manifest, where it's going to manifest. That's God, that's putting them in Krishna. But every single person is a devotee and we have our individual relationship with Krishna and that will manifest by Krishna's grace. And if we ask him, no, okay, I, okay, the stuff, all right, I think I have enough stuff now. Well, I don't have enough stuff, I have a list, but I'll put it in my back pocket, but show, show me yourself. And just ask Krishna who he is. Ask Radharani to help you understand who Krishna is. Ask Radharani to engage you in service because that's the Vrindavan mood. And Radharani will engage us. And she'll arrange everything for us. Radharani manages the temple. That's the, that's the um, realization we came to in Belfast, that Radharani managed the temple because we weren't doing a very good job. And we just understood that she had her mood and it had to be in her mood. And that's, that's what started the crack in the Lakshmi Narayan thing. We we had to we had we became dependent on Radharani to manage things for us, because Radharani knows how to do it for Krishna. And Madhva is sweet like honey, and that sweetness is Vrindavan, and we understood that, and we knew he had come from Vrindavan, so it all just clicked. And we, and we don't know what what their experience is going to be or how Krishna is going to touch them, and we we just have to be. Just help them, just introduce them and let, let it happen. And, and there's so many ways through education that we can nurture them and cultivate them and develop relationships with them. And it's just, if our relationships are based on the this, this qualities of a sadhu, that it's tolerance, compassion, and to be friendly to all living beings, that, that's, the, that, that's what we can do. And whatever, whatever they're going through, I mean, I know one of my uh, inspirations for getting involved in spiritual life was Bob Marley, and there were so many inspirations like that that were kind of a bit questionable, you could say. But at that stage, that was fine. But now, it doesn't do it for me. <laughs> it was just, that was a phase I went through. We all go through our different phases yeah. that are important to get us to the next stage, to get us to the next level. I mean, I was, uh, I had thought at one stage, that um, uh, I, was, I was into Christianity and I was reading the Bible and then someone gave me the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ where it talks about Jesus being in India. So I thought I should go to India. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up in a Hare Krishna temple. But I've never read that book since. <laughs> and, and nor do I take it seriously. You know, it's, it's well, if Jesus were in India or not, well, no, nobody knows. So there's no point making a point about it. And it's, it's not an issue one way or the other. But it was just a strange thing that fell on my lap that just got me thinking in a certain way that ended up in a, in a place that was good for me. So we all go through the, those different things. And they're important for us at, at a certain time. But it's also important that we leave them behind yeah. and move on. And, that, and that's, we change religion regularly throughout our lives because we change our idea of God. We change our relationship with God and how we worship God and how we approach God. And that's changing our religion. And you find out that how you worship in this temple will be different than how they worship in, a, in another temple. And they may insist that theirs is the right form of worship. And you may insist that yours is the right form of worship. And that's how wars start. Mm -hmm. well, but that's not tolerance, compassion, or being friendly towards anyone. So just if we have a loose relationship with religion, we're not a religious movement, we're a spiritual movement. And we're not spiritual in a vague way that people say, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual-like. You know, it, it, they're saying spiritual and you don't know what they're talking about. You know, we do know what we're talking about because Prabhupada has said it here. We're talking about Krishna in Vrindavan. And when we talk about Krishna, we're not talking about Krishna, we're talking about Krishna in Vrindavan. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur says this as well in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. He talks, he talks about different religions and how different people practice and he analyzes them and he goes through right up from Abrahamic religions right up through the Vishnu Tattva and, and right into Krishna and Vrindavan and he comes to the conclusion that it's Krishna and Vrindavan not, not any other person that's the person we're interested in and, and for us that's our interest Krishna and Vrindavan and he's right here he's manifest right here and so the mood of this temple is the Vrindavan mood it's the mood of love. 
And when I talk about Radharani, when I mention Radharani, the relationship with Radharani is very special. You can't, you can't, you don't get a relationship with Radharani just by going and say, hey Radhe, and wave back. It's, it's not as simple as that. You go through Lord Nityananda, and then through Lord Chaitanya, who is Radharani. And then you get a relationship with Radharani. So it's through the mercy of Nityananda, the Guru, that he's the one who starts to clear the way for a relationship with Lord Chaitanya, who is Radha Krishna. So anytime you worship Krishna, you say we're worshippers of Krishna. If you worship Krishna, you're, you're worshipping Radha automatically. So, but to develop, to get a relationship, to get reciprocation from Radharani. Radharani is a very wonderful young girl. And any young girl is shy. And they're reserved. And you don't just walk up to any young girl and just ask for a relationship. You have to be... You have to, she has to know she's protected. You have, to, you have to assure her that you're there for the right reasons. That's how you approach young women. So this is, this is a, a young woman and she's full of love and her only interest is to serve Krishna, not to serve us. Her service to us is to engage us in the service of Krishna, but she can only do that if we're interested in engaging in the service of Krishna. And if we're not, she won't have anything to do with us. And we shouldn't try to have anything to do with her. So we have to be very careful how we approach Radharani and make sure that we are, we've approached Lord Nityananda first. And the Norton Das Thakur songs are, are crystal clear about that. In nearly all his songs, he said, without the mercy of Nitai, without the mercy of of Lord Chaitanya, you can't have the mercy of Radha and consequently Krishna and Vrindavan. Radha Madhava Ki. Jai. Krishna, Krishna. So today we have, um, what time are the kirtan starting? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. In here? Yeah. Two o'clock in here and we'll have Jai Dev, Jai Dev, Jai Dev. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hari Hari. Yeah,